Hey everybody, so this is a video about the kinetics experiment and how um, I expect everything to get accomplished just so everyone's on the same page. So first off, our data is just now complete. And so if we, if we look at this data, there's a lot of readings that we aren't gonna use and some readings that are not very clear. And so let's see. Okay, so we have one more measurement that's going to be taken for number one, but I think in the meantime, this is not too bad. The, these two times are pretty close together. So the gray box means that we may not want to use the third time, all right? And this is probably just a factor of being measured on two different days. So the first measurement was on Monday and the second and third were on Tuesday night. Um, same kind of issue appears in reaction two. So the first two measurements were on Monday and the second two were on Tuesday night. So even these are all the same chemicals and um, assuming people were not contaminating the original bottles, these should match in theory, but one day difference is um, apparently quite a big difference for us. Okay, so I think I highlighted this in pink and, and yellowish so that we could notice the difference between data taken Monday versus data taken basically one day later on Tuesday. Okay. Um, yeah, so gray is sort of my thinking is maybe we don't need to use that data point. I'm not too sure about this because we, um, these three were all measured in one day. So we wanna make sure to use the ones that are within 10% of each other. And so again, you just take, you know, like 33 two times 0 0.1, that's 10%, you'll get 33.284 and add or subtract that from 332.84 and that's your range, right? So that's what we mean by within 10%, that's what we mean. Um, let's see, so this data for reaction nine, this is the one that was cooled and we were, it's supposed to be 10 degrees below room temperature, but we don't have a cool water bath. All we have is a hot water bath. So getting that temperature stable is tricky. And we had three or no, four. We had many people measure this and everybody got pretty wildly varying answers. Um, I highlighted the ones that kind of match each other. So blue represents two that are pretty close together. They were two different days, two different people. And yellow, same deal, two different days, two different people. I think this gray one is just an outlier. Maybe I'm not sure what happened, but you know, that happens pretty frequently, it's fine. That's why we take multiple measurements. So in your groups, you're gonna, when you're going through this data, you have to decide which data to use and you should justify that in the procedure section of your report, all right? And so sometimes it's just a matter of putting the data into your Excel file and seeing how your graphs look, seeing how it changes or doesn't change your re results for your orders of reaction and such, okay? So once you've got all your Excel sheet set up, you can go back to this original data file and try out different data sets and see what makes sense um, after you've calculated things. Okay, um, the other one that's kind of wonky that I'm not real sure what the proper answer needs to be for our data set, um, there's kind of two. So we had several different people measure reaction 16, I think. Nope, sorry, it's 15, reaction 15. And we had kind of a span of, of answers. And so I'm thinking it might be these two in the middle. They are definitely the closest together. I don't know if that's going to be accurate or not. So again, when you get your data done, take a look. And then for reaction 16, we have wildly varying answers. Okay, so these first two were taken on Monday afternoon. And then um, these next two were taken on Monday evening, um, each by you know two different people. And then these two were taken on Tuesday night and they vary a bit. Uh, I think, no, I'm sorry. These two were taken on Tuesday night. I think this one was, yeah, that was Monday evening. So you can see we have wildly varying answers and the trend doesn't make any sense in terms of the chemicals decomposing because if that were the issue we would expect like Monday afternoon to be a little higher 
then Monday evening, not a lot higher like that. And then Tuesday would be even lower still. So that's not what we're seeing here. Um, so again, you're just gonna have to use your judgment, use your um, work as a group to decide what data to choose, which makes the most sense. And then in your procedure section, you'll explain why you made those choices. Okay, and so then this is the um, class-wide kinetics data, which is linked right in the lab stuff folder for kinetics. Okay, so in the laboratory stuff, then I pick laboratory module and we're gonna go to kinetics. That's where everything is at. So our class data is this folder right here or this spreadsheet. That's where you're gonna get everything that you're gonna use. And the, somebody asked in Discord the other day whether we should average the two. Um, and by the way, you can choose more than two data points. If we have something where there's three data points are all close together, then use them. Um, but 10% is our window, okay? The answer to that question is, uh, it depends on how your, your group decides to set up your spreadsheet program. So one option is to average in the beginning. Um, for times and then have one rate for each. So reaction one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. Another option is to calculate two different rates and then average. It doesn't matter which one you do, um, but your group needs to come up with a strategy for doing the calculations together. The calculations are gonna actually be done in Excel. I've given colors to each group and I sent an email last night with links to um, uh, not Excel, I'm sorry, uh, Google Sheets file or and a Google document. The document is for your report. The first thing to work on though is the spreadsheet as a group. So if you haven't already, you need to go in and click those links from your email so that and sign into Google and then I will let you have access to these files to edit them. I do it this way so that I can easily go in and see who has contributed um, to any given assignment. So I'll show you that here in our class-wide data, whoops. Um, and this is because in group work, one of the, the most difficult things is when people aren't fully participating and someone ends up doing more work than they need to. So like, for example, I can see that our lab technician, Kate entered some numbers for Abby during lab. And I can see when people weren't logged in on the iPads, I can see who entered those data, all right? And so essentially any changes that you make are kind of tracked in Google and it allows me to see who is contributing and how. And so this is gonna, this is gonna be helpful. I, uh, I've been using this method for about five years or so for the kinetics report. It allows me to see who's contributing and who isn't. And that does impact your grade. If you're not doing your share, then you don't get the free points. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, someone else asked me yesterday, how, how, what's the best way to divide up the calculations? And there isn't a good way to just divvy it up because the calculations are extensive. So the introduction of, of our procedure has an explanation of everything you're doing, including the chemical reactions involved. So these are chemical reactions that should be included in your introduction whenever you get to writing it. So there's two, there's, there's one equation four and one equation five, and they kind of, they go together. Um, the, the actual calculations start off uh, essentially, um, so the Example calculation for how to find a rate begins with equation 12 right here. It's on page four, okay, page four, equation 12. And basically all the way down this column and all the way down the second column here, it's walking you through an example of how to calculate the rate. The rate is not based on the total amount of persulfate, S2OH. It is instead based on the total amount of our fuse, which is S2O3 2 minus thiosulfate. Uh, when we had an issue on Friday, okay, the issue was that it was turning color immediately. So my first assumption uh, and what has sort of been true in the past is when that happens, it means our thiosulfate S2O3 2 minus 
is expired, bad, it's been sitting too long, or the bottle was old, or something is going on with that chemical. So what I did during lab on Tuesday night last week was I made brand new thiosulfate and we tested that and it was still not working. Uh, our technician found out that the problem was the S208. It was expired, it was bad, whatever. So she made a new one and it worked great Monday and then yesterday. All right, and so basically when we're doing the calculations, um, S203 two minus is consistent throughout every single experiment. S208 is not, and so we can't use S208 as our rate determining step, okay? The S203 two minus is our stopwatch, our clock or whatever. That's the thing we're actually timing is how long it takes for the S203 two minus to, to get consumed. Okay, so this calculation is one of the most important to start off with. And so it's basically just however many, um, whatever the molarity of your S203 was and the volume that you put into each flask, which again is the same. So you only have to do this one one time. It's the first step in the calculations and you only have to do it one time. So this is not one that you have to do in Excel. Somebody could do that on paper or type it up in, in a Word document or whatever. Um, th this is not the right concentration. This is an example problem, okay? So it's showing you how to do the work. It isn't the same numbers as what you'll use. The volume's different. The volume will be consistent for the in entire experiment though. So once you've calculated the volume, then you'll know what to use for every cal concentration calculation, okay? So that's your starting point. So you're gonna have a big column with a bunch of rates, at least 16, maybe 32, depending on how your, your group decides to set up the Excel sheet. Sorry, the Google sheet, whatever, you know what I mean, okay? Um, so once you have found the change in S208 two minus using S203 two minus as our starting point, then you will just divide by each time and that gives you the rate. So you're gonna have that part in Excel, dividing by the time we'll go into Excel and you'll have a big column of either 16 or 32 rates. And then you need to go to the calculation sections of this, of this lab report or lab procedure and it walks you through everything. So in table one, reactions one through four, we are determining the effect of I minus on the reaction rate. You can tell cause that's what it says in the caption describing the table, so I minus. And so these, these calculation instructions will tell you what to do. So these are gonna largely be done in Excel. So you will have like a column of uh, different volumes of KI that you put in, the molarity will be consistent and you can use this information together to compute the concentration after mixing. Again, keeping in mind our total volume is the same for all of our reactions. Okay, so you, this is something you can program Excel to do and drag it down the column or across the row and it will calculate, um, it'll calculate your molarity for you if you have laid the equation out properly. Then your next step is to find the same information for S208. So you might have a column of uh, volume of S208 that's been added. It's gonna vary, you know, from one experiment to another. So that's why you'd have a column of data for that. The volumes all come from the tables on pages six and seven of your lab. Okay, so same kind of setup for this one. You're gonna find molarity in the reaction mixture, meaning your total volume of reaction mixture. So you just add up across this column here uh, is what you're gonna use for your denominator. The rate you already have computed, that's from page four, the introduction. Then once you have that all aligned up and ready to go, you just take, you can create a formula to solve for this exponent in Excel as well. That's the logarithm part of things. It does discuss that somewhere in here, but it's telling you that reaction one and two should have ratios, two and three should have ratio and three and four should have ratio. So that's giving you the relationships that you're testing and you'll use that information in Excel. Similar process in, in, in the second part of the calculations, it's telling you to calculate the, the molarity of Ki and S208. Well, you already did that. So you don't need to do it again, right? You already did that. You've got a column of, the, of information for each of those. 
The part that's different is which ratios you're making. So here it's five and six, six and seven, seven and eight. And that's gonna solve for y if you use the logarithm to, to break it apart. Then of course you solve for k. You'll do this for every single reaction. So you're gonna have one column where you click the rate divided by concentration of i. You click in on these things that you've calculated and your order of reaction, which you've rounded to a whole number and you click on the S208, right? And so basically you, you, you wanna use this procedure to guide you in your calculations, okay? In terms of how you do it, it's important to at least get together with your group. There is a link in your group tab that says collaborate. That works kind of like a Zoom room. There's also an ability to email. Okay, so in your group, you'll have more people listed. This is my fake group for myself, so I can show you what I'm talking about but you have the ability to click on collaborate, which is um, a private Zoom room, essentially. There's a whiteboard in here that you can use. Okay. <laughs> All right, anyways, so this isn't gonna work well because I'm already using my camera, but you know, it's basically your one way to collaborate together. The chat button's in a little bit of a different place in this one. So you would go to this open collaborate panel and you can share um, whatever your, your screen, a, a whiteboard to, to write on if you want to. You can even share files there. You can record these, at least as an instructor. And I think you guys as individuals might be able to. So the tutorial here will help you navigating with collaborate, okay? Um, so that's one way that you can work together. You can meet and collaborate and work together. You can also share files, um, discussion boards, however you want. You can send an email to the entire group. This is all in the groups tab in Blackboard, okay? So it, a good policy is to assign um, sort of like tasks rather than just breaking up a project and saying, okay, you figure out the rates and you figure this out, you figure that out. It's not really gonna work well that way because you need all of the cohesive data together. And so like if whoever you assign to do the rate doesn't get around to it until right before the due date, then no one else can get the work done, right? So rather than looking at it as a per task issue, it's better to assign roles. Like one person is the time manager and one person is um, an editor to look over and make sure everything makes sense. One person is, I don't know the communications person, keeping everybody in the loop and on track or sending me an email when you have questions or whatever you wanna do, right? So find roles for each person and agree upon them. Writing it down is uh, like as a group is a really good practice. So everybody has clearly defined expectations for what their contribution in the project is gonna look like. Um, so if you are really good with with um, Google Suite, you might be the tech person. You might be there to help people learn how to enter the equations or learn how to take what they did on paper and put it in there, okay? So thinking about group dynamics more as roles rather than, okay, you write the introduction and I'll do all of the calculations. Oh man, that would be terrible for the calculations person. That's a lot of work. Um, but at any rate, um, that's a better practice to assign tasks to individuals than sort of thinking about it as break up the project, okay? Uh, at any rate, you can also use Discord to communicate with each other. If you want a separate room just for your group, I'm happy to do that also. Let me know what you need. Um, but don't wait to start these calculations until last minute. They are extensive. They take a long time to do. You've got some graphs to make. Um, so yeah, okay. I will pop in also on your Google documents on your sheets randomly and just kind of check and make sure you guys are progressing. And if you're not, you get a message from me. Um, and if you have questions, you can also post them in the Google document as well. And I get an email anytime someone makes a comment, but that's a way to like highlight one area where you're stuck and say, uh, is this correct? Or, you know, do I have the right sig figs? Or I don't know whatever your question might be, okay? So it's gonna be a little bit of a busy week, um, but, but you guys got this, it'll be fun. <laughs>